Hey everyone, uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. I'm gonna go over a presentation here on GoVX Uranium. Uh, I think that it looks pretty good in terms of value for a shareholder. Uh, I understand that they might have done some share dilution in the past because some people were talking about that. Uh, but I'm just looking at the presentation that they have to see what projects they have, when they come online, how many pounds are in the ground, and what they're doing, and the project timeline. So. Uh, this is project locations. There's three projects they have. I'm not going to pronounce them. I'm probably going to slaughter them. Um, we've got a bunch of pounds in the ground, which is very good uh, for an investor. And there's a lot in the inferred category, which could go and move up into the indicated and measured categories. So uh, they did a very good job of explaining the current conditions of the uranium market. I'm just going to go right here and show you this. These are the exact things that I look at uh, for an investor. So it's smart that they have this. Um, but right here is the, the supply demand balance. They show you this balance that we're going to go into a deficit here going forward. They also have the cost curve here, which I look at uh, for the break even costs of the uranium miners. Uh, to get up there at, at these high cost, high cost, I think that probably says Etango, it's probably Bannerman or something. That's $70, $80 a pound up here. Uh, and perhaps this changes over time. But uh, the majority are in, you know, I'd say the 70 range and under, almost all of them fit. So um, looking down, this is the GoVX proposed development strategy. They've got the two projects here. Uh, I know there's a third, but they've got two that they're going to go into production here. Um, we've got 2021 definitive feasibility, 2023 for the other, development 2022, 2023, 24, 25, and production 2024 and 2026. This is what the production profile looks like over time in millions of pounds. So pretty strong, you know, five, six million pounds uh, starting in 2027 and 3 million in 2024. So that looks pretty good. These are the two projects. Uh, just wanna go over pre-production capitals, 359 million for this project, 21 year mine life, and a break even point of $48 a pound. Steady state production, 2.7 million pounds. So that's pretty good. And they are a low grade uranium, lower grade. Um, but they can, they can move some of these inferred up into the indicated there's some exploration potential here as well, which is good if you're an investor. Uh, the other project, it's 121 million pre-production capital at a break even of $46 a pound, 2.6 million pounds steady state. And they've got a lot in the inferred. Uh, this is gonna be to be an open pit mining and heap leaching is what they expect to do uh, for this project. Uh, we also have exploration upside with drill targets identified and limited work to date undertaken on two prospective prospecting licenses. So that's exploration potential upside here as well. So I like that. I like it a lot. And this one is another project. Uh, it's an East Uranium deposit. In addition, fairly contains 63 million pounds copper and 21 million ounces silver, indicated inferred resources. Considerable technical and environmental work completed to date. Uh, it looks like they've got some so we've got the grades here of uranium as well. So this is, this is good as well, more upside. I all, obviously I like silver and, and, and copper. Uh, so Govin Friedland, he's the geological engineer with a technical and business development background, co-founder of Ivanhoe Industries, the parent company. Um, just to let you know who that is, we look at the strong sponsors capital structure. We have uh, Denison Mines is an older owner of about 14%. Uh, Govin Friedland, the ex um, executive chairman and director, he owns a pretty good stake in it at 5%, 3.8% Ivanhoe Industries, which he's affiliated with, and Camco Corporation has a small stake as well, about 3%. So they have some skin in the game. That's good. This is enterprise value per pound total resource. This, this may be a little bit old because uh, this is an October presentation. But GoVX was way down here. Uh, that's what I like to see. Uh, I see Lermite here. This is Global Atomic. This was cheap and it, it moved quite a bit higher. Um, and these are the producers averages. So one thing I want you guys to take, take into account is that these are developers and these are producers. And they show this very clearly and I wanna make sure it's clear to everyone that the producers typically, on average, have a much higher valuation than a developer. So. What we're getting here is, is a very good package, I think, in GoVX. Uh, we've, we're getting exploration upside potential. 
we're getting developer, you know, we're, we're paying de developer pricing right now for it. And if they go into producer, their, their assets are gonna be priced higher because they're producing that asset. So we have a potential to expand the resource at the same time, move that resource into a producer, which is gonna get revalued upward. So that's good. So right here, it shows you the average producer value is more than the average uh, developer. And now if the price of uranium goes up at the same time, we have all of these things working in our favor for our investment. So that, that's good. So investment rationale here, experienced directors and management team, a growing Africa focused uranium company with defined project development pipeline and increased uh, jurisdictional diversification. One of the largest combined uranium mineral resource bases amongst its peer group with combined measured resources of 36.2, an indicated resource of 107, and an inferred resource of 86 million pounds. Considerable exploration potential with several drill ready targets defined at each property. Mining permits granted in Niger and Zambia, uh, mining countries recognized for good infrastructure and mining history, significant metallurgical test work and engineering studies completed on its development assets providing Goviex with an opportunity to build a strong development pipeline. So this is their mineral resources. This is in tons and whatnot, million pounds. They've got the, the million pounds over here, 80, 31, and 27. I think this looks exceptionally good. Uh, I, I looked at it a long time ago, but now I'm re-looking at it and it's starting to look better and better, uh, the, the company. Now, I know there were some people talking about them diluting shares, uh, potential, uh, I, I get it. Some people are kind of scared, but uh, I'm, I'm taking my chance on it. Now, let's look at the charts. Let's see what the charts tell us. So I'm going into Goviax. Uh, I'm gonna ch just give you a little bit of background here. We've got a uranium to gold ratio at 62 to one, which is, it, it hasn't been this cheap. This is extremely low valuation in relationship to other assets, in relationship to gold, and gold's cheap in relationship to the Dow. So if gold takes off, our uranium, gold's just a, a, a proxy for inflation. Our uranium's gonna get priced, I think, against gold, which is gonna make purchasing power gains against gold, which means it's gonna go up at a faster rate than gold goes up. So this could be a gigantic opportunity. I mean, just an absolute huge opportunity to own a company that has exploration potential and uh, developer, they're developing these mines and once they develop, they'll obviously get repriced higher. So the market conditions are looking good. The commodity to the 500, uh, commodity index to 500 ratio is extremely cheap. So that is also another indication that the commodity sector in itself is cheap. And that we're looking at the housing starts. Each one, of, I, I overlaid the S&P to the commodity ratio and it's saying that in every expansion phase, the commodities did very well during an expansion phase. Expansion phase, expansion phase, and we're lining up for a, another expansion phase in real estate, which is gonna be the wind at our back for our investment in uranium, saying that the timing is good to go. So that's what I look at to see if the market conditions are ripe. They are, and the valuations are, have never been this cheap. This is the time to invest in these companies. Game on is what I'm saying. So I look at the chart here. We broke out of this big downtrend. Uh, this is a four year downtrend. So that's looking good. We're looking at the Goviex. I'm, I'm zooming in using stockcharts.com here. Uh, we've got a shoulder, a head and a shoulder and we've got a breakout. So that's looking very strong. I'm zooming in even more. We've got all this um, volume stepping in and buying this stock all throughout the entire time. So this, someone's in here buying it. The volume is very strong. Uh, it looks like we're just starting to do an uptrend here. I think this is a, a very good potential opportunity uh, to cost average into Goviax. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, the projects look pretty good. They have some pretty good size behind it. They've got good stakeholders with some good, you know, good stakes in the company. So I think they'll be successful at, at pulling this off. Uh, are we gonna see another shared dilution? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take a chance on it, uh, that's for sure. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna build a position in it. Uh, I already have some position in it. I'm gonna keep building into it and cost averaging in. The charts look good. Hopefully we get a little bit of a pullback here uh, where I can buy it again uh, at a little bit cheaper price. 
uh, but it looks very strong. I like the, the company. They laid out their presentation very well. Uh, yes, they need some money to get these projects rolling. Uh, we'll, we'll see how they raise that money. So if you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. I uh, appreciate you guys listening. Subscribe if you haven't. And that's all I've got. Thank you. This is Finding Value.